All right, good evening, YouTubers. How are you guys doing? I'm trying to uh, get my light adjusted here. It's kind of dark in here in the truck or whatever. But um, normally I don't do videos like this, but this particular video I want to do, I just watched uh, Brian Korn um, <laughs> go live on, on, on Facebook. And he went live and apparently he's rebuking people about not coming up on a submission to of leadership of the churches and things of that nature. And he's using this as, um, different scriptures. One of the scriptures that he used was, he said that God didn't, he said that Jesus submitted to the baptism of John. And so Jesus came upon the authority of John. Right? Now, this is the thing. I've been, Brian corn has been on my radar for some time. I've been paying attention to some of the things that he's been saying. And Brian Brian Corn is unequivocally a false prophet. So anybody that's listened to Brian Brian Corn, that means that, that proves pop proof, proof positive to me that you do not study the word, you do not read the word of God, you do not know what the word of God is, and you are in a systematic system called um, you're in an institutionalized church. You're not really a part of the body of Christ. You really 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 believe the lingo and the stuff that Brian Corn is saying because this is the thing about God's word. You do not have to twist God's word. You can read God's word verbatim, and God's word will tell you everything that you need to know. If you gotta go into the scriptures, you gotta dig and twist and and insinuate and apply certain things. That's not God's word. God is very directive in what He speaks. Yahuwah is very descriptive in what He says when He gives us a command and what He says. So <clears throat> here's the thing. Brian Corn basically saying come up under the authority of, right? Well, here's the thing about that, and I got some couple of scriptures that I want to read off. Okay, the thing about that is God never wanted a man to be in between another man. God always wanted to have a relationship between him and man. He never wanted to put anybody over anybody. In in, in the case in point, when you come to the Israel, come to the um, the Israelites, God never wanted to give them a king. He gave them a king because they 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 beseeched him so much for him to give them for them to give them a king because they want to be like all the other nations. But the whole part of being a part of the body of Christ is you're supposed to be called out from among the nations. So, and then if you're called out among something, that means you're not like something else. So our Father and our King, our Father is Yahuwah, our King is Yahshua or Jesus. That's who our Savior is. We don't supposed to come up on the authority of no other people. Period. That, now, see what that is is that that that's that false doctrine that I be talking about. That's that spiritual covering crap that will keep you in bondage for a long time. I know a lot of people that subscribe to that whole spiritual covering stuff, and I'm telling you, it's a lie. It's false. So if you don't understand, if you don't really, you got to really read the word and seek God for yourself, and if you will understand what God is trying to say and how to have a proper relationship with God because you'll have people like Brian Corn that's constantly manipulating you and constantly manipulating scriptures and he talking about he sat down and all this listen it's called listen there are two different type of churches here there's the called out people the body of Christ the ecclesia the true called out ones of God whose Christ is not only their savior but he's their Lord which means they take all their orders from the tower which is Christ. I'm using a military term, but they take all their orders from the king. There's the Holy Spirit, the Ruach in which God has placed into all of us, and it's supposed to teach us and guide us because it's connected directly to the Father. And when we believe in Christ, we receive the Ruach, we receive the Holy Spirit in order to for us to grow further as men and women of Christ. Okay? So I'm just just give me a second. I want to read this real quick. Um, now this is 1 Samuel um, chapter 8 and I'm trying to see what verse it is um, I'm going to start at um, verse 5 it says and, and they said unto him behold you are old and your sons walk not in the ways walk not in your ways now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations but the king displeased, um, but this thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto El Shemuel, which is Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me. 
That's very key. They have not rejected you, but they have rejected me. That I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Misraim, which is Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other Elohims, so they do, do also unto you. So God is saying, even though it's, I've already brought them out of this stuff, even though I brought them out of it and showed them that, hey, I'm with you, they still haven't served me and they serve uh, other gods. And now he's saying, so now what they did to me, they're doing to you. Okay. <clears throat> Now therefore, hearken unto their voice. How be it yet protest solemnly unto them and say, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. So God is saying, appeal to them. Listen to them, but appeal to them and tell them, hey, this is going to be what it's like if you have a king that's going to reign over you. <clears throat> and Shemiel told them all the words Yahuwah unto the people that asked of him a king. And said, this will be the manner that a king shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and for to be his horsemen. And soon shall run before his chariots. And some shall run before his chariots. So he said, he's going to have, he's going to take them and put them on chariots. And he's going to have something running the chariots. He's going to have something running in front of the chariots. So he's going to have horsemen and, and, and um, pointmen. This is what he's saying. <clears throat> and he will take your daughters to be... Um, confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers and he will take your fields and your vineyards your vineyards and your olive yurts, even the best of them and give them to his servants and he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give them to his officers and to his servants and he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work he will take the tenth of your sheep and you shall be his servants and ye shall cry out in the day because of your king which you have chosen which ye shall have chosen you and Yahuwah will not hear you in that day so what God is saying is you rejected me and you're saying put a king over us and these are all the things that this king is going to do to you he's going to take your daughters he's going to take your sons he's going to take your lands he's going to take your fields he's going to take your sheep he's going to take your oxes he's going to take your asses he's going to do all of these things and for his use and it's going to be a hardship on you so you're going to cry out to me and say god yahuwah Help us, rescue us. And God said, I'm not going to even hear you. I'm not going to even pay attention to anything you're saying. Because I've already told you what it was. And y'all being hard-headed. this is what it says. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Shemael. And they said, nay. But we will have a king over us. So they said, nah. Mm, you're talking crazy. We still want a king over us. That we, we may be like all nations that we know in the New Testament. The Bible says, you are called from amongst them. You're not like them. You're my people. You're unique. God gave them the law to set them apart. They were unique. He constantly kept saying, hey, because you came from a certain land, don't do the things that they're doing. And because you're going in a certain land, don't do the things that they're doing. But they said, nah, we don't want to be unique. We want to be just like everybody else. And so, Samuel, Shemiel, Samuel, all the words of the people, he rehearsed them in the ears of God, in the ears of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said to him, hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Shemiel said unto the men of Yasharel, go ye every man unto his city. So he was like, okay, fine, cool, let's do it. Okay, now, that's the Old Testament. Okay, the Bible is a complete book. Like, the book, I'm reading off my tablet right here. I'm reading off my tablet. And I have the Sefer Bible, which uses all the Hebrew and restores a lot of the old books that they took out. It makes the, the gives the Bible back to its complete form. So, but here's the thing: that's the Old Testament. See, God doesn't contradict Himself. God doesn't contradict Himself. So I'm looking for there's a there's another book if I'm not mistaken
if I'm not mistaken. There's something I want to read off real quick. Okay. Now here's the other passage that I wanted to read. And you got to be careful because people use this scripture, this particular scripture, and they manipulate it. But if you go, you got to read everything into context. Now this is, this is Paul talking. Okay. This is what he's saying to the church of Corinth. He says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Hamashiach. Okay. Which is the Christ. So, Paul is saying, okay, I'm going this way. This is the way with Christ. Hey, let's y'all follow me. We're going this on the same path. He ain't saying, be up under me like a disciple. Here's, here's what it's saying. Now, I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered them to you. I want you to read, read that again. Now, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinance as I delivered to you. See, a prophet is a messenger. They delivered the message. Paul is saying, I'm delivering the message to you. He said, but I will have you know, this is very key, that the head of every man is Hamashiach, which is Christ. Paul is saying, I'm not your head. The head of every man, including myself, is Hamashiach, which is Christ. And the head of every woman is the man. And, every, and the head of the Hamashiach is Yahuwah. So he's saying, okay, this is a him established order. He's saying the head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is our man. And the head of Hamashiach is God. That's the order. It says every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonors his head. Not every woman who prays or prophesies, not every woman who prays or prophesies with an uncovered head disgraces the head itself, but it is a disgrace for those who are shaven. For if the woman is sheared yet wholly covered, such women are not obscene with holy cover. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For inasmuch as he is the image of the glory of the Elohim, but the woman is the glory of the man. See, this is Paul establishing the order. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. For neither was the man created for, for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought women have to power over the head because of the angels. Say back then, angels was being tempted by women of, of, of women. It says, nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in Yahuwah. For as the woman is of the man, even as the man also be of, by, also by the woman. So the Bible said the, the man is the woman is of the man, but the man is born of woman by woman. But all things Yahuwah, judging judging yourselves, it is is it coming that a woman pray unto Yahuwah uncovered? There's not nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair it is a shame unto him but if a woman have long hair it is a glory to her for her hair is given her for a covering but if any man seem to be contentious with have we we have no such custom neither to call out of the assemblies of yahuwah okay so i read that particular scripture to say this paul is establishing that i'm a messenger of god and i'm glad that you guys have decided to Follow the message and follow me as I delivered the message. But I'm not your head. Yahuwah is the head of the Hamashiach, which is Christ. He's your head. And the head of every man, every woman, is the man. Then he goes on to describe, it's a shame for you as a man to have your head covered. Which is me. I got my head covered right now. But what he's talking about is, it's a shame for you as a man to have somebody over you. Because no one should be in between you and God. This is what he's saying. This is not a manipulation tactic. This is just what the Bible is saying. And so, when you get somebody like a Brian Corn that's constantly stressing you to submit to you, they like that authority. They like that authority. They've been raised that way. But I'm telling you like this right here. Brian Corn is a false prophet. I, this dude is always talking about, and there's another violation they're doing. Which is the one of the Ten Commandments that say, Thou shalt not take the Lord your God, your, um, Yahuwah, your Elohim's name in vain. To do so is, he said, to those who do so would not be held guiltless. So when you're talking about God said this and Yahuwah said that and God ain't spoke to you, you're in some big trouble. And you can't manipulate the word of God. You guys listen, I understand this. This is one thing I understand. There are many people that is caught up in that church system. They do not know God for themselves. They believe that they're doing something wrong by not going to church and not being submitted unto 
uh, a pastor because that's what they've been taught. But I'm telling you right now that you've re I've just read it to you that it was never God's plan. It was never his plan. I don't care how many times people try to manipulate those scriptures. And let's just address one of the scriptures that Brian Corrin said when he said he was baptized by John. You forget that when he came to the daggone Jordan, John said, um, I'm not worthy to baptize you. You should be baptizing me. You know what I'm saying? He kept saying, this person is coming whose sound is I'm not worthy. John was sent before Christ. John was never above Christ. So he didn't submit to no authority. He told John, hey, baptize me. But that wasn't Christ submitting to John. That's the thing that Brian Corwin is, is insinuating. That Christ submitted to John that way. No. Christ is only in submission to the Most High God. And he kept stressing to people. This is why you got to watch that spiritual cover. He said, you have only one Father. That is Yahuwah. And you have only one Christ. This is me. This is what he was saying. And he said, you are all brethren. Call no man on earth your father. This is what Christ said. So now how do we get back in the Bible to where it's saying submit to the to um submit to your elders and that's being taken out of proportion? That's not what it's saying. My father, my dad, my earth father is my dad. My dad advises me on a lot of things. I listen to him. I hearken to his voice. But I'm free to make my own decisions. I'm not in disobedience with God because my dad told me to do something and I didn't feel like it was okay for me or feasible for me, so I didn't do it. You know, but anyway, um, Brian Corn, I got my eyes on you, dude. And I'm going to be watching you and every time you put out something false, I'm going to be correcting your doctrine because you put out some bad stuff. And you're leading a lot of people, man. Dude, you need to quit your stuff. And you can, listen, let me tell you how you can tell tell these guys are false. I'm going to tell you how you can tell they talk very stoical. Well, glory be to God. <laughs> Listen here, saints. They talk like that. They talk very stoic. That's when you know something is wrong. Pay attention. People don't talk like that. Normal people do not talk like that. Normal people just do not talk like that. But y'all have a blessed night, man.